fire. I know. It must be a, a lady's topic, I guess, or something. Who knows? Oh, well, I thanks. wouldn't think so. I think it's no. such a relevant one. It's so great, though. That, uh, thanks for everybody for coming and, and you know, yeah, coming to hear me speak. Oh, yeah. thanks. I'm super excited. So let's get started. Um, and hi, Richard. Can you right. okay? All right, good. <laughs> you, can, you can wave at me. So I'm, I just wanted to come and talk about herbalism in a new sense. Um, this is about plant spirit medicine. My herbalism training is sort of, I wouldn't call it medical, but it's more like, what do you need? Oh, you have a cough. You need to moisten everything inside. You need something, maybe it's antibacterial. So you might look at the herbs that have those properties. But in this kind of situation, they're looking at the spirit of the plant. So they're, they're not looking at the, the properties of it at all. So if you, someone just maybe is just really sad or maybe they need um, what, an earth, more earth element or they need more the feelings of mother, they might give them an herb that's similar like a mother is a mother of what plant. Or, he didn't actually say what plant, but I'll, I'll tell you, it's about this book called Plant Spirit Medicine by Elliot Cohen or Cowan. And um, so for him, it's more like a shamanism way to use herbs, not not a, not a, this does this, you know, it's very, that's a very allopathic way to use herbs. Like I need a antiviral and then I do it. And then I need this and I do it. But, and, and then we are actually trained to use the actions of the herbs, but he's just using the, the feeling of the plant. Is it happy? Is it, is it um, connected to a certain element? So, so I was meditating. I have a lot of digestive issues and um, I was meditating after herb school, trying to figure out what do I really need for my health? And, and uh, I heard the word Lorea. And I'm like, Lorea? Is that in like Lorea Tridentata? Which is, I'm like, isn't that chaparral? And we were warned not to use chaparral because in the 90s, people were taking tablets of it. And I don't know if they, they either already had liver problems that they were trying to cure or it caused liver problems, but some of them ended up with liver failure. They actually had to get their livers replaced. It was serious. So I would say, don't take it. <laughs> don't do what I'm about to tell you. I did, but um, I was pretty careful with it. I asked someone who was a professional in the herbalism community, and I brewed some. It was so strong, I couldn't even, I couldn't drink it. And when you're taking tablets, you don't even get that mechanism. You just take it, and then your body's going, ah! Because it's bypassing your tongue. Your tongue's meant to tell you if this thing's, something's poisonous or something, right? So, and uh, they, unfortunately, they didn't list what the dosages were. Sometimes it was pure chaparral. Sometimes it was a mixture of stuff. But basically, it's been outlawed. That's how strong it is. Chaparral does have historical use for, um, like, mild coughs. But it's very, like, uh, I think it was used short term only, only, only. So people, so that's why we were warned against it in herb school. Well, it turns out, and then when I heard the word Lorea, I sort of saw, it sounded like a woman's name. Doesn't it sound like a woman's name? Mm -hmm. And I was picturing this woman with kind of this off-kilter red curly hair, kind of like short on this side and kind of long and triangular on this side, kind of fun and boppy. And I was like, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> and so then I went to look up the name and um, and then later, um, I used it in a, like a weak solution. I tried once I brewed it too long, like t 30 minutes. I couldn't even drink it. I had to throw it away. And uh, my mom had sent me some. And then I tried to brew it just as it said you could use something like six grams. I, you can't. You can't. There's no way you can drink that. It's super strong. So I just tried a super weak thing for a very short brew and only for a short time. And then I'm like. I'm done. I'm just like not doing this very long. I don't want to hurt myself. And I had asked, like I said, I had asked a professional what he thought. He said it was like I could have taken six times. I'm like, how would you even drink that? That's insane. So, and later I found out it's good for this thing called biofilm. Sometimes people have bacteria in their gut, and it kind of hides under this like layer of. It sort of hides from your immune system. They're finding out that things are hiding in you, and you. So you might be taking antibiotics, but they're kind of like, it's like having a blanket over them. So some, they're finding out some herbs can destroy biofilm. And there's others. You can use other herbs. You don't have to use chaparral. Um, but I thought it was so interesting. Like, why did I really 
really did think of it like a woman, this red-haired woman. And then I, I was talking to my friend who's a, sort of a wise woman, and she was in a, a wise woman film, and she recommended I read this book, and this is what I believe. I, I kind of was missing in herb school. I have so much in, I'm so much in my head, and they were talking about the feeling of this and the feeling of that, and you could feel like rising energy or sinking energy when you're tasting herbs. But I wasn't thinking about the spirit of the plants. But they did talk about how if you're going to take some of the plant, you should ask it and wait for a yes answer, either rising or you hear something, or you get an image that somehow it's okay. And then you should bring a gift because you're taking something from the plant. It should be reciprocal. So this book is called Plant Spirit Medicine by Elliot Cohen. Or Cowan, and he didn't invent it. Many people have used this. And I'll read this quote here. Plant spirit medicine is a magical religious rite in which plant gods bestow their grace. How is that grace invoked? Some people use song, other use, others use pills and potions, still others lay on hands, wave feathers, or dance. Who knows how many ways may be waiting to be discovered or rediscovered. Whatever method is used, the spirits are invited to help the patient enter the dream of nature. This has nothing to do with fighting illness. For us, for us, there is no such thing as an herb that is good for arthritis or migraine or depression or cancer. Whatever medicine a plant gives you, that's what it will do for your patients. If you want to use a plant for healing, or you have to dream it, or it won't work for you. So that sort of means you've made a connection with it. And rarely do two, two people have exactly the same dreams. And rarely do two people use the plant in exactly the same way. It's super interesting. So plants have a being that serves as a representative. And this could be seen as a, a human, or an animal, or a comical figure, or a, an alien, or some other um, amalgamation of shapes. And certain plants have more power than others in the spiritual realm. And these are the ones that we often regulate in our society, that we believe are hallucinogens, or tobacco, marijuana, ayahuasca. So it's interesting that there are some that are, the ones that are more potent um, are more powerful spiritually as well. So again, it's not based, based on medic, uh, medicinal quali qualities. And Elliot started meditating with plants and his messenger plant is um, plantain. It's not the banana plantain. It's a green leaf plantain called um, Pontago Major, I believe it is. And it's a green leaf and the Europeans brought it to America. And the Native Americans called it the white man's footstep because it followed them where they, they uh, Trampled. Tra yeah, trampled. <laughs> exactly. But they often, they found it very useful, too. It's a super great, moist, healing herb. So, but that became Elliot's uh, messenger plant. So if he needed someone, he would contact the plantain first, and then it would find the one he needed, which mm -hmm. is great, because then he doesn't have to figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's what he said. So in one case, the plant that was chosen had a pink and purple flower, and I I was trying to find the story in the book again, and I, I couldn't. But basically, the per, I think the person needed more happiness or joy. They were just like this sunken down, and they actually saw. I think he meditates. He didn't really explain what he does. I think he either meditates or stands over them and meditates. I'm not really sure. They didn't really go into that. But the, the, the client saw pink and purple and then described sort of things similar to the plant, but then other qualities of, of happiness. So, and then he, Elliot was also using homeopathic medicine, but once he couldn't get a supply, I think it was starting to be regulated or um, not everyone could use it anymore. And he started using the plants because he had to, and it actually turned out it worked better. So, and if you know about homeopathic medicine, what they do is, they're not really sure how it works, but they take the plant and they, they put it in, um, I don't know if they cook it or put it in water, but then they take a drop of that and put it in the next big thing of water. And they take a drop of that and put it in the next one. So, and then they, and they, between each one, they shake it. It's just supposed to make it more powerful. And believe it or not, it's supposed to capture the, the energy of the plant. And apparently the more dilute it is, the more strong it is. And it gets to the point where there's, it'd be like a drop in the ocean. You can't detect any of it left. So how does, how does it work? And some people say it doesn't work, but there's some evidence that it does, and they're trying to figure it out. Is, is it nanoparticles or quantum physics, actually? They have quantum physics. 
people looking at that. So, but anyway, he used plants instead. And then during his meditations, once he met this rain god called uh, Tle Tlaloc, or Tlaloc, I'm not sure how you say it. I have a photo of him. And he was seen as someone who had water coming out of his hands. And there's a black, uh, you can look at all these photos, but the black and white one has two snakes wrapped around as a mask for his face. And you can go just go down and you can pass it on. Um, but it was so neat. He saw, he first saw him like this with water coming out of his palms. I don't know if it was like that or this. And then later, <laughs> when he had this, con he had a conversation with this being and, um, he said later he will, this will be confirmed that as not as not a dream. And later he saw his sister or a friend had a book on the shelf <laughs> about South American gods or something or religion, and he went to look it up and guess what he saw? Like like this, you know, a, a god with water pouring out of his hands. Wow. So, and interesting enough, he actually lives in California. If you don't know anything about California, it's there's only four seasons: drought. Uh, fire, <laughs> mudslide, and rain. So although they have they have so much sun, I mean it's just like they barely get they don't get enough water. And he said he was talking to Slaylock. He said they don't appreciate it, and they totally don't. Everybody has lawns. Most people have lawns still, and I used to live there. I could say that. It's insane. It's a desert, right? So so he would do some ceremony to try to help people if there was a drought on. And, he, and uh, I guess he kind of saw him, after a while he sat down and he was smoking. You know, I'm imagining him like in some 70s garb doing this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, he, so he did some ceremony, Elliot did some ceremony. He's like, he's like, he's like, Did, didn't I do it right? I didn't get any rain. He's like, yeah, yeah, I gave you a sprinkle to let you know you were on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he's like, he's like, eh, you know, they don't appreciate it, so. And later he met a shaman who knew him, and he had on his wall tons of religious stuff, and behind his mask of Jesus was Tlaloc, a little thing of Tlaloc, hiding behind his mask of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they, they described a, a, they called, the tribe was Huichol, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, Huichol. And it was sound like the ceremony was part Christian, part Tlaloc, they had a band, they had they had girls in white dresses, and then after this, they went to the Catholic Church to do this. And after all this, they had a festival outside and food. It was just like this amalgamation of everything, so it sounded really fun anyway. So what other spirits are there? There's also spirits for earth, uh, wind, fire, <coughs> sorry, water, thunder beams, and more. The Native Americans talk about the thunder beams that bring the lightning and, uh, and thunder, and I believe... It might be important because of, you know, it's so dry in so much of the Southwest. And uh, they also, this links with the five elements theory of the Chinese medicine, where they seek to establish balance to, in order to heal. So it's not about you treating the problem, it's about you restoring the balance of the body so the body can heal itself, which is, which is similar to what they were talking about in herbalism. If you, if you remove deficiencies, maybe you can, the body can help itself. 